Opinions on the all new Tesla Model S and Model X seem to be a little split depending on who you ask. Some people love the design changes Tesla has gone with and implemented with these cards. They love the massive new display. They love the materials. They love the standard Chrome delete. And yes, they even love that half kind of weird yoke steering wheel. Others, not so much. They'd prefer something a little bit more traditional and they really just really don't like that new steering wheel. So I thought in this video, I would give you a little glimmer of hope to that steering wheel, tell you why it might not be all that bad, and also talk about some new secrets and hidden features. A lot of things we've discovered about the Model S and the Model X we didn't really know on first glance and we're learning more every day, and just how feature-packed, feature-rich, and just how awesome these new cars are, and how much cool stuff is really built in behind the scenes that you probably didn't know about. So I guess let's start with that yoke steering wheel first, because this is kind of where the point of the most contention and most decisiveness is uh, amongst Tesla enthusiasts and car enthusiasts in general and different communities, because some people either love the way this looks or they absolutely hate it. And I kind of understand why, because it doesn't seem on the surface all that usable as compared to a traditional steering wheel and even legal. Many are kind of questioning and challenging the legality of this, uh, and especially are, are very curious to see how regulatory bodies uh, deemed to kind of see this fit uh, in the US and around the world. And we really don't know if this is technically street legal. We haven't really gotten a crystal clear answer from any regulatory body as of right now. Uh, I guess kind of for context, we have seen this on different cars that are on the road, or I guess more specialty cars. We've also seen this on other Tesla concept cars like the Roadster. So Tesla's obviously done some, some forethought into this and they've obviously uh, you know thought about this before and they've done some research into this. Uh, but we just don't know quite yet if it's legal or not. And it looks like Tesla could possibly be preparing for uh, an opportunity to switch this up if they happen to face some legal challenges with this new steering wheel. Uh, thanks to some Reddit sleuths online who did some digging onto the Tesla website, uh, someone was able to find a photo of the all new refreshed interior for the Model S and Model X with a regular old plain traditional steering wheel, which kind of begs a couple of questions. Some think that this could be kind of the answer to all of the naysayers and Tesla could give you the option to either get this new steering wheel, enjoy the new look, the new design and all that it has, or have the option to switch uh, to something a little bit more traditional and kind of stick with what you know. Uh, that is one option. Some think that maybe Tesla is going to kind of have this in reserve just in case uh, the yoke steering wheel does face issues with regulatory clearances and they're just going to switch back to something regular for now, or maybe it's kind of a little bit of both that they could switch to something more traditional for now until the yoke steering kind of clears its hurdles and then they'd switch back to that later or offer some kind of option. We're not really sure where this is going to land, but it is clear that Tesla definitely um, has this on the mind and definitely there is a world where both of these exist side by side. Now on one hand, this could kind of uh, make the production process a little bit more uh, logistically complex than it needs to be. If they were to offer both of these as an option and they have to build both types of cars with the different interiors, different steering wheels, they could do it, but it just seems to be a little uh, too complex or unnecessary for what Tesla's trying to do. I could much rather see this as kind of a mock-up uh, option, kind of a backup just in case they happen to deal with any issues. But it seems like, uh, according to some tweets from Elon and some other things we've heard, they're kind of moving full steam ahead on this yoke steering wheel, whether some people like it or not. So I'm curious, do you guys like this or not? I don't really have any strong feelings one way or the other. I'd have to probably try it first before I could give kind of a decisive opinion, but it looks super cool and I'm really curious to see how this does work in practice. Sticking with that steering wheel for a little bit longer, we're learning more about the functionality and also kind of how this works because the stocks are removed. And you'll notice that even if you look at that uh, sort of backup leaked photo of the regular steering wheel, there still are no stocks on the side to kind of control when the car goes into park or drive or neutral to turn on uh, the windshield wipers or to turn on your signal to go left or right. Uh, those are still gone, so how does all of that work? And if we take a look at a photo of the steering wheel, you can see that you have all those controls built into the steering wheel itself. So you can use these little uh, multi-wheel nub click buttons that we've seen on the Model 3 and Model Y to control different functionality. So you can turn on your signal, you can uh, engage uh, the windshield wipers, you can do things like honk the horn, all from these little buttons that are existing and kind of living right on the steering wheel itself. 
And we're still not exactly sure how this works. I mean, do you click left to turn the signal on to the left, right to go right, or how do, we don't know how this is going to work. We've heard rumors that it, these are forced touch buttons, so maybe the harder you press, uh, a different uh, command uh, is going to be uh, executed. Uh, we don't know exactly how this is going to work, but it looks like most of these controls are going to be done from the steering wheel. And also we're learning more about how the car switches from park to drive to reverse. Uh, according to, again, some tweets from Elon, it looks like the car is going to use kind of AI and machine learning to do this all automatically or attempt to do this automatically. That according to Elon, the car will be able to kind of give its best estimate of what you're trying to do. So I guess the example is that you're in a, maybe a parking stall and you have like a foot uh, of space in front of you and uh, kind of one of those like uh, bump things. I don't know what the word is. a cement kind of barrier uh, at the front of the stall. Like you, you know the car is not supposed to go forward or it's gonna hit the wall. So the assumption from the car is, okay, you're looking to reverse and get out of it. And it kind of knows, okay, there's cars around you. It kind of sees your location. Maybe it's smart enough to put all of that information together, geolocation, uh, your surroundings, Surroundings, the distance around you, and know what you're trying to do. Uh, but that's not always going to work out. It's not gonna have a 100% success rate, and even the 2% of times that it doesn't work out could be very costly mistakes. Now, Elon does say that you're supposed to be able to kind of override this manually by tapping on the screen, which is nice. But then you gotta tap on the screen, you gotta see which uh, gear the car thinks you're going to go into. I can just see this being a little bit more complex than many would like. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to work out, if this is going to ship uh, with the uh, uh, production ready versions of the Model S and Model X. And uh, I'm curious to see how this plays out because as of right now, uh, machine learning and AI are taking a, a much bigger uh, position in your car and kind of choosing your gear for you. You like that or you don't. Next, let's talk about that massive 17 inch touchscreen that is beautiful and absolutely dominates the interior of the Model S and Model X. And I kind of noted in another video that uh, this seems to be much more built in, much more intentional than the screen on the Model 3. You'll notice that it's kind of built into the center console, whereas on the 3 and the Y, the screen just kind of sticks out and protrudes and is kind of its own little part. Uh, it's a little less elegant than what you have on the Model S and Model X. I really like this a lot. Uh, and we're also learning that uh, the screen is supposed to be able to tilt left or right. Now it's unclear how it's going to tilt, whether it's uh, maybe a button like it's mechanical and it kind of motorized and it moves one way or the other, or if you can kind of actually pull uh, physically pull the screen out and move it one way or another. We know that in the Model S and X that the screen was slightly tilted to kind of face the driver because that was the primary person using the screen. Uh, so that looks to be also an option on the new cars, but we don't know how that's going to work. So according to Tesla, yes, the screen uh, is able to be moved left and right. We're just not sure exactly how that's going to happen, but it is an option that you can do on these new Teslas. Also, we're hearing a lot more about the computing power and the upgradability of the storage on these cars. So we're not exactly sure how this is going to work, but the presumption is that the MCU inside of these new Model S's and X's uh, is much more advanced, it's more powerful, it can play games like Witcher 3, and it seems like there's a lot of computing power going into these systems. And we're also learning from Elon that apparently the storage can be easily upgraded uh, as well. Now, we're not exactly sure how this is going to work, if it's something like Sentry Mode where this lives off of an SSD. But when asked about you know storing and playing games, Elon says that the built-in onboard storage is going to be greater than what's currently on the cars right now, and it can be easily upgraded and kind of uh, you know replaced. So I guess the question is you know again, is this micro SD cards? Is it SSDs? Are they? you know, physical SSDs, external SSDs, how exactly does this work? We don't really know, but that's one of the cool little features that we just are kind of learning about right now is that you can't actually upgrade uh, the built-in internal memory or external memory on the new S and X, and the onboard storage should be a uh, higher capacity to be able to download and play games like Witcher 3, which is pretty cool to see. Also, when looking at this screen, you just can't help but wonder if this kind of gives us a glimpse into what version 11 of the Tesla software is going to look like, because we know that a bigger version is going to be released. We know there is probably going to be uh, some big new features, probably some design elements that get tweaked and overhauled. And this does look different than what we have on the current cars right now. It looks different than the S and the X, and uh, certainly more different uh, than what we have on the three and the Y right now as well. So it looks like there could be some, uh, if you do some pixel peeping, 
things, some design elements that could be changing on the new 3 and the new Y, as well as all the other Tesla vehicles. And again, we don't know if this is going to be a new software update, but this maybe does give us a glimpse into what Tesla is planning with some future software updates and rollouts uh, that aren't just going to be on the S and the X, but also on the 3, the Y, and the Cybertruck as well. Running through a couple more fast ones here. Uh, if you've been a fan of the three and the Y's ability to use your phone as the key, that is now a thing on the S and the X. I know that was a real big point of contention for many people. Uh, they love the car, but they did not love the key fob. Now you're able to use your phone as the key like you can on the three and the Y with the Tesla app. That is super cool to see. Uh, wireless controllers are now standard and uh, able to be used to play games on the new consoles, or I guess the new cars, not consoles. As well, we don't know if this is gonna be any kind of special thing, but assuming it's probably just gonna be Bluetooth controller, so that's super cool. So you can play games in the front as well on the back, on that little eight inch screen in the back for rear passengers. And we're also kind of getting a glimpse, a really cool glimpse of a mock-up of the interior ambient lighting. We haven't seen any official photos from Tesla, but this is one person's interpretation, which looks super nice, very subtle, very elegant, but also super cool on what the interior lighting inside the Model S and Model X could look like. What are your thoughts on this? I think it looks great and I hope this is really close to the real deal. Tesla also says that there should be new wireless charging built into the car. So we're gonna have it obviously in the front in kind of that new redesigned center console. But Tesla also says in the back, in kind of the armrests you're able to take down and put up for the rear passengers, there's wireless charging built into that, which is super cool to see. And Tesla also says there is fast charging USB-C ports available for each passenger. So we don't know exactly what that means, but I guess there's gonna be ports all around the car if you wanna plug in your device and uh, get a speedy charge for your battery uh, from any seat in the car, which is super cool to see as well. And then last but not least, the audio system has been tweaked a bit and also is adding active noise cancellation, which this is a real big question mark. What does this mean? Does this mean that the, the car is gonna pipe in a sort of a, a audible signal that kind of does its best to kind of drown out the wind noise and the road noise that you have and that many people have complained about inside of Tesla vehicles? Is there going to be some separate kind of speaker array that's going to work in conjunction with microphones to kind of uh, use computational processes to block block out the sound. I have no idea. I don't know what active noise cancellation looks like in a car, but I am super excited to see what this means. Uh, but I guess the assumption is, and what Tesla's kind of vaguely saying, is that this should do a better job kind of canceling out the background noise of the wind noise and the road noise and other external noises as you're kind of listening to music and media on the car. We're not sure if this works only when you're listening to things or if this is kind of a, a built-in thing that's just going to work whenever the car is in drive or whenever you're in the car, this active noise cancellation is always on and kind of always working. We're not sure on the details, but we do know it's built in. So as soon as I know more, I will let you know, but uh, super cool to see a new noise cancellation system actively working inside of the new Model S and Model X. And that's about it for now. What do you guys think of the new Model S and Model X? Are you a fan of this refresh? Do you like all the nice little uh, premium bells and whistles, like the wireless charging and the ports all around? Do you really like that back eight inch display? And what are your thoughts on the steering wheel? You love it, you hate it. Do you think this is going to be a design change and a trend we see following suit in the three and the Y? Or do you think this is something special just for Tesla's more premium cars like the S and the X? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, Thank you guys so much for watching. I am Robert Rosenfeld. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I will see you all in the next one.